I'm gonna keep playing with my purple ball. I just started recording, you fuck. I know. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, all right, guys. All right. We've got to talk about it. The state of Overwatch. Let's do this. So uh, a ton of people in the community, including some pros, have been talking about the state of Overwatch recently, and there's a lot of reason to. And Blizzard, for some unknown reason, just keeps giving us reason to talk about issues with the game itself and the surrounding community. If anybody hasn't seen yet, we will link down below, but Siegel has become very outspoken recently along with some other pros in the community such as Sherfor and Jane. All three of them did a discussion that's really interesting after Siegel's uh, kind of talk about the state of Overwatch, the community, the game itself, and just a lot of surrounding info in general. And, and XQC. Oh, he did. He jumped in at the end. I totally forgot about that. How can you forget about XQC? <laughs> anyway, uh, we're, we have a lot of subjects that we'd like to cover in this realm, so that's what we're gonna talk about today. The first topic on the agenda is the removal of stats. Now that is not all stats in general, right Nova? Uh, apparently not, but at this point it might as well be, and I've been linking that shit for you all day. You know, I was already on the cusp of like, why, why even play this game? And it's pushing me further away. Um, they've removed the win rate on anything other than general competitive. So if you played any of the the uh, one-off competitive matches, it, that's all gone. They also removed healing over 10 minutes. It's 10 minutes, right? Yeah, healing over 10 minutes. They removed that stat. So now you can't tell if how you do with one healer versus the other, which is just amazing. That's, it's so bad. Like you can't even like make that up like we already had a lack of stats in the game in general and the uh, the thing that the community has been asking for is more stats and then the thing that they do to change stats is take stats away and some of them really important like healing over time like how th this isn't going to go over well do you, do you have anything to add to that blister well i definitely think that they needed to add more stats i mean I've been playing a lot of Destiny 2 with Nova lately, and one of the greatest parts about the end of doing a Crucible match, which is a PvP match, is you actually get to see how well you perform compared to other people, so you know how well you actually played. There's no way to track that when you're in a quick play or even when you're in competitive. You can track some sort of stats on your account after the games are over, but they really needed to add more stats to let you know how you're doing compared to other people on your team while you're in the middle of a game. And they just, they don't have that. And they really needed to add that kind of stuff instead of removing what was even remotely close to that. Remember guys, just, just be happy. It's just happy, happy fun time. Just, just play to play. No, we fucking need stats. <laughs> And, and it's not it's not just like, oh, we need to point out who's doing bad. This is something that Siegel, Gene, and Sherfor, and to some extent XQC, but with, with his uh, craziness, they kind of got a little bit off topic from that. But <laughs> they talked about the stats specifically that they would like to see in matches so that they can make calls on the fly. Not like, oh, you're performing bad, so you, you need to step it up. It's like, okay, they're killing my Ana. A lot or what? specifically yeah, but... like x players killing my healer a lot i need to protect this healer so that i can win the team fight that is crucial information to play overwatch the way it's supposed to be played but especially I know they don't want people... when you don't have people communicating when you that problem doesn't pertain to the pros because the pros will actually say hey guys i'm playing mercy right now and the widow keeps on picking me off i need somebody to kill the widow before i can go and heal you that would always happen in pros chat, but when you're playing at casual levels, and I'm sure even diamond levels, that you're not gonna have that conversation. So having that type of information is crucial. So I got two points here. First off is why is it a bad thing if you know personally that you're doing bad, yet the team also knows. So that makes you actually say, yeah, I'm doing bad. Yes, you might get called out, suck it up you're playing in competitive and uh secondly the pros actually have more stats available to them they have all the stats and way more stats than we've ever seen 
you can tell because during Overwatch League matches, they bring up random stats that we can't see. Okay, so bo both of those points, I have something to add on. The last one, uh, Sherfor and uh, uh, Siegel were actually talking specifically about that, and they were saying that the teams don't actually have access to those stats. It's just the casters and only during the match. So it's not even like the pros have access to that. They they've had they had to go to those external tools that got banned in Overwatch just to get even a semblance of stats like wow that. that's that's dumb. Some just of the dumb. teams had uh, actual contracts with those tools. I forget the exact team. I think it was Dallas Fuel or it something. Was Philadelphia, I'm pretty sure. Oh no, I think you're right. But either way, one of the one of the pro teams had contracts with them because they didn't have access to stats that they needed to accurately assess their teams. So it, it's. It goes way deeper than that. And then your first point was people being called out in match. And I would argue that it's actually worse now because it is mis often, very often misdirected anger right now that is causing toxicity in the community. That's because true. players don't know what the issue is. The, the age old thing you hear all the time is, God, our DPS suck. Well, that's maybe the issue only a very small percentage of the time realistically you know what else creates toxicity is oh hi i got gold damage and i'm moria yeah metals the, people don't understand like metals don't fucking matter most of the time and, and even the one even the stats that even kind of matter like hero damage don't really because like the categories between like damage and healer and tank, they get blurred a lot in Overwatch. The categories are I, not very good at defining those roles. I Where my this, killing blows at? I think this leads perfectly into our, our second point on this. Toxicity in the community. That we have a lot of toxicity in this community and I, I think that's very well known. And Blizzard keeps trying to do things to like, remove it with, you know, like the, the voting for- uh, Endorsement uh, system. Yeah, the endorsement system. So they're trying to do things like that, but obviously it's not working. And why is that? I think it flows back to stats and just the general way that you queue for the game and you get random teammates who want to play random roles and random characters. Like people want to queue up for Overwatch and play a certain character or maybe even a certain role, right? Like some people are stuck to a certain character, but let's just say they want to play a certain role and they queue up solo and they get put in a match with five other people that also want to play that role. And now, well, toxicity is created because if they're not, the, the pugs aren't doing well, well, now I'm going to yell at them because I wanted to be that role in the first place. Right. Or if you're forced to play a role that you didn't want to play and then you're not as proficient on that role as you are on another role or another character, then it, it becomes an extreme detriment on your team, which causes more toxicity. It's just, it's a massive, massive issue in the community. And I really, I don't want this conversation to be like a role queue discussion, but like, there's a reason why you hear all of, all of the pros talk about that. And a lot of it has to do with toxicity in the community. They want to be able to play the game the way that it's intended to be played on the roles that they intend to play on. And you can't do that in Overwatch right now, particularly when it comes to competitive play. Yeah, I'm definitely okay with quick play being a little bit more flexible and do whatever you want. And yeah, it's a, it's a shit show, but competitive really needs to be competitive. And I know that these other guys already beat this to death, so I don't want to beat it to death more, but that's, I feel the same way as them. Okay, so leading from toxicity, here's another thing that adds to it, and it's, it's another thing on our list. It's the meta, and I'm going to frivolously call this the low skill meta, but really people have called it the CC meta, uh, and I think that's, that's a more accurate term for it. But really what we're talking about is most of the heroes that they've added over the past year, essentially, but even a little bit more than that, a lot of their skills have been focused around crowd control. And what that has created is a meta which focuses less on skill sets like McCree or Tracer or Genji, um, or even uh, uh, heroes like Hanzo to some extent, but uh, 
uh, some of the more mid-range heroes don't struggle from this, but really it's it's any of the heroes that require a lot of mechanical skill very close to a team fight. They've suffered uh, over the over the past year, and the, the current meta that we have is deemed the low skill meta because it's very easy to play the CC heroes as opposed to the non-CC heroes. You know, you know what else is easy? Is a grab dragon strike. Yes, but it's almost required. The, the amount of those types of things that existed in the game uh, before the CC meta was like only a few things. And now it's leading to a meta, which is very, very CC heavy. And a lot of heroes do not get a lot of value particularly at the mid to lower ranks. And it's caused a lot of rift in the community because players can't play the heroes that they want to play, essentially. It's like there's too much rock, paper, scissors going on and not enough skill counterplay. I think that's the core of the issue people have with the current meta. Yeah, the skill counterplay I get, but the hero thing, I'm kind of torn on. And I want to I want to put this out there is that I really really hate the current meta and i hate doom fist and i hate the cc but remember like every step of overwatch and some of them lasted quite quite a while or longer than others but there's always been a meta and there's always probably going to be a meta because it's almost impossible to balance heroes perfect so like you're going to have those metas and right now we just have this meta where certain heroes are popular and that's kind of what i was getting at earlier with the grav joke it's just that's the current meta but you're i mean you can't expect that every meta is going to be something you you enjoy playing i guess like you have to that's why i think you have to pick a role and try to master the role but right now that's hard to do i just my point here is that metas are going to change like certain heroes are not always going to be the best and that's just how it is in these competitive games the the issue that i have with this is I mean, you were talking about the difference between the CC and... I was just saying that, like, uh, Grav and uh, Dragon Strike is, like, the thing right now. So if you don't play, if if you're a DPS and you, we don't have a Hanzo, well, we need a Hanzo. And if you're an off-tank, you better be playing Zarya. Uh, there's some other comps like that that come up, too. It's like, oh, only run GOATS. And that's pretty much, like, what you get in competitive these days. It's like, if you're not running Brigette and Doomfist, fuck you. So... My biggest issue with the CC stuff is Nova said that they they're that you can't really try and balance the whole game around all these characters, but it seems like they're not even trying and they're just saying, well, let's see, Tracer is being used in almost every single high end game. Let's find a way to make that not happen. So they put in Brigitte and all of a sudden there's no tracers anywhere because she just one shots tracers and tracers is essentially useless we're going against the back line with brigitte there so they're not even attempting to balance their game with a new hero to kind of make it to where okay it's not a hard counter to tracer but and a tracer could still work but a tracer is not going to be as effective as x y or z now it's brigitte is there you can't play tracer or you lose right to, to radage point it's not so much that they put a counter into tracer is that they put in a dumb low skill counter to tracer where you just uh right click left click hit shift and the right. tracer's dead and i want i want to be careful not to call that dumb because really what's happening is that there's no opportunity for counter play the tracer doesn't have the actual mechanical kit in the game to overcome what briguette does and that is that like Essentially, their kits are unbalanced to fight against each other. So when you're looking at something like a, uh, let's, let's say a Hanzo versus a Tracer, there's the ability to counterplay. Close up, the Tracer has the upper hand over the Hanzo, but through Hanzo's movement kit, the ability to aim, the ability to uh, get, get his, um, his rapid fire arrows off, uh, he can beat the Tracer at the short game. Uh, but if he misses all of these and the tracer does her blinks effectively, she can outplay him. That is what counterplay is. But when it comes to this heroes that they've been adding, there's not the ability for some of the heroes that they counter to also outplay them. And that's where the toxicity and the frustration comes from in the community. There's no dueling. That's it. There's no dueling. It's just, yeah. you're, you're, yeah. you're dead. 
There's a, it's a one hit kill all the time, no matter what you do. So to uh, push us forward a little bit more, uh, and this is a point that I added to our list. Overwatch is doing nothing new. BlizzCon was an, a, a perfect opportunity to push this game forward. And I don't even know, just makes make a change in the game or do something different. And what did they give us? A uh, animated short and a one new character. I know she has an alt, which is another character. So oh, it's one and a half characters. Don't give me that crap. It's one new character and an animated short. Yay. This is great. Yeah. Yeah. And not, <laughs> not addressing these other things that we've been t talking about for, I don't know, seven ish minutes now, maybe a little bit more. Like there's tons of things that you need to address with the game before new content, in my opinion. And changes I, would be new to me. I'm okay with new content that's not just the same crap that they've been putting out for two years. All they've done in the two years that this game has been out is new maps and new characters. So I, I don't think of anything else except they keep recycling old uh, events. We think that there's a reason for that. And there there is a, a lot of reason for us to think that there's actually something big coming. Let us Let us not like just trash on them without reason here. Uh, because Jeff has come out and said there are things that they're working on that they just can't talk about right now. And we don't really know what that is. Like that could be anything. A lot of us have speculated a, uh, a expansion to Overwatch. Some of us are thinking that it could just be an entire rework of how you play the game in general, which at this point I would welcome with open arms because I think that the game desperately needs it. And really, I think it's that the community needs it more than the game needs it. The game definitely needs it because I've completely given up on it right now and played and playing Destiny with Blister. Well, you have to think like they modeled the gameplay of this similar to League of Legends. Like it's it's kind of like that MOBA ish t style gameplay where you have your different roles to fill to build your team to go in against another team. And what kind of new content do you get in those kind of games? You get new maps. You get slightly variation, slightly different vari variating gameplays and maybe a new map. But the biggest thing is a new hero. So obviously they're just going to give us new heroes and a new map every once in a while. It's It would not be a good business decision for them to go and create completely new content when Blizzard is only good at looking at what's already in the market, taking it, making their own and making it better. I kind of disagree, and I'm not a big MOBA guy, but I played quite a bit of Heroes of the Storm, and those maps actually feel quite a bit different every time that they put out a new map. The hero side, yeah. Yeah, I get it. That, I mean, they push out a lot of heroes in MOBAs, but generally the heroes feel quite a bit different. I don't, I don't know. Well, that's that's what like that's what how you make a MOBA different though is you introduce new characters with new abilities that change the meta, that change the way that you play the game. There's similar heroes that do stuff, not exactly the same, but very similarly. But they'll alter your entire team composition. So stuff like that is what I mean. You'd have to really, really, really build up the hero base for that to be effective in Overwatch right now. But until they do something about how much CC there is in the game. They're not even going to get close to that. Yeah. And you also go into a MOBA playing the character that you want, basically. Like, I know there's the, the draft system, so you have to choose from some characters. You might not get exactly the one you want, but you get to pick from, you know, let's say three or four of the characters that you like to play. You're going to get to play those characters, and you, the team kind of builds around each pick, and it all works out. Like, the team tries to work together instead in, in Overwatch, we queue up and then we get to the character select screen and we get five DPS. Yeah, it's. I, I think that there's a lot of things going on in the game right now, and you can't really sum it up in like a 10 minute video like this. Um, it, a, a lot of what Overwatch has become is something way more complex than a MOBA, I would say. It's harder to balance the amount of, of skills and ways to play the game when you're in a first person state than you are in a third person state with very clear objectives. Overwatch is a little bit more complicated than that because of its medium. And also because it has 
drawn so much in inspiration and uh, eyes from the community. And people are very passionate about it and thus take it a little bit more seriously. I, I would argue I would argue every single point that you just made, but I don't want to go into a 20 minute argument. Part of me wonders if Overwatch would be better with the MOBA aspect of draft or like you queue up, you pick your character, it throws you into a match with five other people who have already picked their characters and there's no changing, but I know that's not what they want. But I wonder if it would work out better because it has a lot of MOBA like in its DNA. It does for sure. And Team Fortress. They, what I think they need to do is not do a draft like that, but you go into a draft, each team gets to ban three three heroes from the match where neither team can play them. Or maybe not three each because that would be a total of six. And I mean, you could completely wipe out an entire, like all the healers are gone or all the tanks are gone. Yeah. But you, you know what I mean? This is this is something that uh, Sherfor was suggesting. And he was suggesting that they do actually just one, even just one ban per team uh, would would make a proper draft system in Overwatch work with the current amount of heroes that they have, and <laughs> and he he understands the game at a much greater level than any of us do even combined. So I would tend to trust his opinion on that one. So there would be no more Doomfist ever. <laughs> exactly, Doomfist Brig banned every match. There we go. <laughs> Jeff's like, wow, why do they keep banning Doomfist? <laughs> I wouldn't ban Doomfist. I'd ban Hammond. <laughs> You would, but and Hammond's I can play not that game bad again. compared to Doomfist. No, nope, no, nope, he broke the game. No. Okay, whatever. We're not going to go into this. Um, why don't... Why doesn't everybody... Tell us in the comments below issues that you guys have seen with the current state of Overwatch. We've gone over a few of them here and even provided a, a few potential solutions at each step of the way. Um, and, and we'd like to hear your thoughts about this stuff down below. Uh, anyway, this has been Blister, Nova Punk X, and myself, Radical Edward, having a discussion on the state of Overwatch. Let us know what you think, and thanks for watching, everyone. See you all in the next one. Get good scrubs. Hey, it's Ratted here. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe as well. It really helps out the channel. We put out multiple new videos each week, and we appreciate all of your support. Thanks for watching, everyone, and cheers.